So in the last video, we showed you guys how to do a compression test. We call that a general test. And what we mean by that is we're checking the general operation of our internal combustion engine. If we determine that that general test needs more pinpointing, we're gonna do a pinpoint test. What our pinpoint test today is gonna be is a cylinder leak down. This is known as a TDC whistle. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm installing this into the spark plug hole. And what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the key in such a small way that it's gonna start, we're gonna use the same starter motor to spin the engine. If you get an engine that comes right out of the box from the factory, you still might have up to 20% loss, which is absolutely normal. What's up guys, welcome back. So this is gonna be part two of our automotive series. So in the last video, we showed you guys how to do a compression test. We call that a general test. And what we mean by that is we're checking the general operation of our internal combustion engine. If we determine that that general test needs more pinpointing, we're gonna do a pinpoint test. What our pinpoint test today is gonna to be is a cylinder leak down. You might be wondering, what the hell is that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the spark plug, we're gonna raise the cylinder to top dead center compression which means that the piston is all the way at the top, both valves are closed, so this way the cylinder is completely sealed. We're gonna introduce some shop air into it using a manifold with two gauges, and that's gonna tell us if there's any loss of air going into the cylinder. What loss of compression or loss of volume into the cylinder is indicative of is that's gonna cause a engine misfire. So if the vehicle can't compress and hold the air, the air properly in the combustion chamber, that's gonna result with an engine miss. So with the pinpoint test we're gonna do today, we're gonna to be able to determine if it's a valve problem, if it is a valve problem, which one of the valves, is it a ring problem, a piston ring problem, or is this a blown head gasket or a cracked block? So we're gonna be able to determine that just by running this one test. So let's go ahead and grab our testers, let's get started and let's go right to the car. All right guys, so what I'm installing right now, this is known as a TDC whistle. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm installing this into the spark plug hole. And what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the key in such a small way that it's gonna start, we're gonna use the same starter motor to spin the engine. Okay, so when we crank the starter, it's gonna move the engine in small increments. Once we hear this whistle whistle, then we know the piston is already top dead center and we can remove it and begin our test. So let's go ahead and try that now. Otro. Otro. All right, so once we get that whistle, we know for sure that it's at top dead center. Well, now we can remove this, use our normal cylinder leak down tester adapter, and then we'll run the test. So let me go ahead and remove this and we'll get it all set up. So we're gonna go ahead and set the vehicle up. One thing you wanna keep in mind is if you're gonna be using a cylinder leak down tester that doesn't come with adapters and you're gonna use your compression tester adapter, make sure you guys remove the Schrader valve. If you run this test with the valve in place, then it's gonna always come out 100% showing it doesn't have any leaks, but that's because you set it up incorrectly. So always make sure that that is empty without a Schrader valve. If you don't know what a Schrader valve is, it's a little valve kind of like on your car tires, and that little valve you press in, they have these as well. Just go ahead and remove it if you don't have one that comes with your cylinder leak down tester. So we'll go ahead and install this in the hole. Again, just hand tight. Don't go crazy on it. Don't torque it down because if it breaks in there, good luck getting it out. The next part of our tool is gonna be this bad boy right here. So this is our leak down tester. We're gonna put shop air on this side and then we are going to regulate it, okay? This is telling us how much air is actually coming into the cylinder and then this is telling us what we have for our loss, okay? Again, this is one of the testers that I would recommend spending some good money on because you wanna get a good, accurate reading. And if you buy the lower end ones, they do have a tendency of leakage and then gauges are not 100% accurate. So make a good investment. This is one of those tools that once you invest in it, it's gonna last you forever. Probably the only thing that might break would be the tip or the regulator itself. So the next step was gonna be is first we have to set it to calibrate it. So we'll go ahead and connect it to shop air. Once it's connected to shop air, I'm gonna use my regulator. And what, I'm, what I need to do is I need to set it to zero or the set mark on this side. Okay, once we do that, we'll go ahead and lock it into place. Then the next step is we're going to connect it into the cylinder. 
So based off of what I'm seeing right now, is my tester is telling me that I have over, over 80% loss of volume in this cylinder. Because this engine's not misfiring, I know this is incorrect. So what this is telling me is that the piston got pushed down because I didn't have it all the way up when I set this up. So let me go back and reset it and then we'll go ahead and continue with the video. Always remember if you can't get the engine to cooperate with you, which is what we're having now, you can always go down and by hand spin the crankshaft using the proper socket and ratchet. Always make sure that if you're gonna do so, remove the key from the ignition switch so nobody accidentally cranks the engine while you have your hands near the crankshaft pulley and the belts. It's all about safety. So right now we're going and hand cranking it by hand. Once we hear the whistle, we know that compression or the cylinder's at top dead center and then we can retest the cylinder. All right, so when you guys are looking at your leak down tester, always make sure that one, it's set to zero before you guys connect it to the cylinder. And then also keep in mind that no matter whether this engine is brand new or has 150,000 miles, it's always going to have some sort of compression loss. The reason being is the piston rings always have what we call end gaps. So the end gaps always are gonna allow a little bit of compression to escape. So even though you guys can notice looking at the green section here, we can have up to a 40% loss and that's still gonna be okay. If you get an engine that comes right out of the box from the factory, you still might have up to 20% loss, which is absolutely normal. So now that we've hand cranked the engine and we have it all set up to do it again, we'll go ahead and connect it. We're just looking to make sure that this needle comes and stays within the green area. If it does, we know that this cylinder doesn't have any loss of volume. So let's go ahead and do the connection. All right, so when you guys do a cylinder leak down test, pay attention to your gauge. Your gauge wants to be within the 40% max, zero to 40, indicating that there is loss, but it's an acceptable range. Just like you guys can see here. So this right here is an indication that cylinder number three has no problems, no intake, no exhaust, no head gasket, or no piston rings. So now let me show you what a bad one would definitely look like. So you run the leak down test and then you get this kind of result. To me, anything that's red is bad. So if you guys can notice, we have over 80% loss of volume on this specific cylinder. So now our job as a technician is, where the hell is it going, right? So you have a couple of different options. Remember, your cylinder has access to the PCV or the oil, has access to exhaust, has access to intake, and also has access to coolant. Not that we want access to coolant, but it has access to it. So one of the things you could do here is you can remove the thermostat, the radiator cap. If you see any bubbles coming out of the radiator, that usually indicates a cracked block or a blown head gasket. We don't have any bubbles coming out of there, so we would say that that is okay. The next thing you would wanna do is to remove the dipstick. If you remove the dipstick or the oil fill cap and you see any smoke or noise coming out of here, then you know for sure that it's piston rings. The other step, and I learned this from one of our instructors, is using a glove. If you take a glove and you slide it over the exhaust and the glove inflates, then that's telling you that you have an exhaust valve that's staying stuck open. The other one would be to remove the air intake boot or a vacuum hose in order for you to hear if you have air loss through an intake valve. So what we did is we removed this vacuum hose right here, and if you guys can the moment that I put my finger over it, you can hear a change in noise. So this is telling us that this intake valve on cylinder number three is open, and that's allowing the pressure that I'm putting into number three to go into the intake. If I was diagnosing this car and I have this same result, right here at this point is I'm taking the valve cover off to see if these valves are adjustable. If they are not, that's an indication that more than likely this head is coming off or a valve job. And that's it guys. Again, you guys could tell these tests are not that difficult. And with this test, you're gonna pinpoint exactly where the problem is. Just like you guys saw with that intake valve issue that we showed you guys a little bit earlier, that's how you're gonna be able to pinpoint where's the problem and what do I need to do to fix it. If this information was helpful to you guys, do me a favor, put it in the comments. This way others can also see that this video is very helpful to the automotive industry. If you didn't like the video, that's okay too, but put it in the comments and tell me why. If you guys like this information and wanna see more, do me a favor, hit subscribe, so this way we can give you guys the better information that you guys need to be the best technicians that you can possibly be. As always, guys, a good technician is always learning, and like we always see here at Master Automotive Training, we are working to better the automotive industry one technician at a time, and this starts with you. Hopefully you guys like this information. I'll see you guys on the next one. Signing off here, Oscar Gomez from smartautotraining.com.